with that beautiful music cue, let's say hello. Hi, everybody. My name is Lucas Schooneman. I'm the host, character creation here in Gilding Light. Oh my gosh. Hi. Hello, everybody. Hello, everybody who's here. Hello, everybody to, uh, who came in with uh, Punkle Nix, Mini Terrain Domain, No Ordinary Heroes, Guilty Cosplay, Life Action Roleplay, and the wonderful, beautiful Satine Phoenix. Oh my gosh. Hi, everybody. I'm so glad you could be here for episode eight, the season finale. Uh, we've been doing this for eight weeks now of character creation right here on Gilding Light. Yes, that dice tray. Oh, Ashenworks, you have the dice tray. That's nice. Yes, I got this through the Kickstarter uh, of uh, the Elder Dice uh, Kickstarter here. Uh, one of one of two, actually. I'm very, very happy to be doing this. We were going to have a dice cam on today because uh, I got a spare window uh, because it's a solo stream for me. And I thought, let's change it up a little bit. Let's do something a little different uh, on character creation by not making some PCs, we're going to make some NPCs, which is what we're going to actually be doing. But a little bit about what we do here. If you're new to character creation, if you're new to what we do here on, on Gilding Light, um, what we've been doing here for the last uh, for the last seven weeks is uh, I bring on uh, a, a, a voice actor, an actor, a streamer, a musician, uh, some, some unbelievably creative person. And what we do is, even if they have no knowledge of how Dungeons & Dragons works, my contention has always been, and I haven't been playing D&D for that long, I will say that, only about mm, going on four years now. But my contention has always been that it's not the character sheet that makes your character interesting. It's what you do with that character. The actions they take, the backstory they have, the growth they have throughout the campaign and the interactions that you have with the party, not the role play, don't get me wrong, but just who are they as a character? That's what makes them interesting. They're not interesting just because they're a lizard folk or just because they're a tabaxi. No, and that can be interesting, but how do you make it interesting? What do you do about that that really injects that PC with, and the pun is totally intended here, character? You have to put a little bit of substance into each of these characters. So what we've done is we've had all these amazing people come by and we've said, how are you going to make your character interesting? What are we going to do when we create this all together? So let's make that happen. And that's my that's my big thing. Um, and what we've had, we've had uh, guests like, and I'll just go through the list because I want to thank them all individually for being here this whole season. Uh, Felicia Angel. Uh, Mia Byte, Sean Chiplock, Tosh Ritter, uh, Adam and uh, Aaron uh, Rice Carlson from Trixie Wizard, uh, uh, Slap, uh, the streamer Slap, and uh, Keston Howard. We've had all these amazing people on. They've made th some incredible characters. We even had uh, Trixie Wizard make a dual character build. Uh, which was, you know, we had basically two characters at the same time. It's been a, it's been a grand, grand time, uh, and. So now we're going to extend that kind of thing out from the side of the player and over to the side of the dungeon master. And I think a lot of the things that happen with, um, with dungeon masters, with, with getting started in D and D, a lot of people would say, Oh, it sounds so much fun. I want to play. This seems so much, this seems so great. And it is, but it's scary. It's daunting. It can be a little, a little, uh, a little awe-inspiring as it happens there. Uh, so how do we make all of this happen? How do we make all of these things work? By the way, I want to say thank you to uh, Outer Limits, Ashen Works, uh, Muck Cub, Proud Slime Dad, and the Cedar Forge. Thank you so much for the follows. I appreciate those. Appreciate that. Let's make it happen. Indeed, the Outlaws Network. Uh, so uh, we want to extend this kind of... Uh, of ability to create characters and the, the 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 things that we've been talking about all the qualities and all of the all of the the beautiful ways of of just putting a couple of different writing exercises and improv uh, uh, practices putting them into NPCs because as a starting DM sometimes the the world itself world building and lore building can be so daunting and so terrifying because you might have all of these ideas 
Uh, I want to do all these things in this world. I want to make all these things. I want to make interesting people for my players to interact with. But what do you know what's interesting? You might have them all in your head, but maybe how do you get them down on paper? And my contention, just like a player character, is they don't have to be perfect out of the gate. They can be random. And as long as you just take those random pieces, they're puzzle pieces. Just put them together and you can build from it. And I'm going to show you how we're going to do that. We're going to build a starter town here in less than two hours here on Gilding Light. And y'all of you are going to watch and maybe just participate just a little bit. If you have any questions in chat, please throw them down there. I got chat open here. Uh, if any of you want to throw some suggestions out there as well, totally fine. If you have some questions about how to make your characters or your non-playable characters uh, interesting as well, if you have some questions about what's... Uh, if this is a good idea or, or how do I try to think about doing this or I've had this idea about how to create this and I'm not sure how to go about it, throw them out there. I'm all here to help. I'm not here to obviously to tell you about how this whole thing works, but there's that. Uh, Zion Solaris says, a Dragonborn Baker NPC. Don't think a Baker is not on my list. I got, I got roles here. <laughs> And by the way, I want to say this out loud. Just because uh, I have these um, uh, these these tables that are up here, right here, <laughs> doesn't mean that we're limited to any of these things. Now, we, first of all, what we have is um, we have the... Oh, hold on a second. Let me grab my book. <laughs> I moved it over. I moved it over and I forgot to bring it back. I have my Xanathar's Guide here because we're going to be uh, coming up with names and we're going to... Ah, randomly come up with uh we're going to come up with random names and the random names are going to be better when uh or at least uh more easily accessible to the common races which are basically here these are out of the phb player's handbook so these are going to be a lot a lot easier for us to to grab names for it doesn't mean that we don't need to get names from other things so we can get names from other you know other locations that's totally fine thank you zion solaris jamie wolf uh malkuth soldier and legends dm for the follows as well to gilding light it's really really appreciative we started this thing i think eight weeks ago in dc i think you can back me up on this uh gilding light had about about a thousand followers and now we're looking at 2.4 2.5 something like that we're getting we're getting close to that so uh it's been a good it's been a good run these last eight weeks just to try to get a little bit more um you know attention to what we what we're doing over here and um satine and her entire crew is just an amazing amazing group of people wonderfully creative individuals and uh, it's just it's just been uh, a heck of a run. So uh, we're gonna just do this. We're gonna get started here. Now the first thing we're gonna need to do is actually come up with the name of the starter town itself. So I don't have any ideas for this. I don't have any uh, I don't have any tables to roll on for this. So we're just gonna take some suggestions from chat. Uh, what do you guys want to name this starter town? We're gonna name this starter town right here. I've got a small um, uh, what do you call it uh, spreadsheet up. And uh, we're going to basically be rolling off of this uh, spreadsheet and uh, finding things as we go along here. And I'm going to move some windows around. And Jamie Wolf says, du uh, Devarin or the Veil of Fairies. Ooh. I like Veil. I like. I do like Veil of Fairies, uh, Zion Solaris. Uh, fairies does indi indicate to me a, uh, a water-based uh, location. And who knows? We might not have... I mean, there's going to be a source of water, but maybe not enough for a fairy. I like Devarn because it seems uh, very simple there. Uh, but Dunsmire, Dunsmire, Meyer always is a, is a good one there because uh, it's built off of that one, though. I like that idea there, too. And uh, you know what? So, Jamie, you were the first one to speak up. We're going to name this place Devarn. Why not? Duvarin. Duvarin. Has a kind of a dwarvish name to it there, too. You know? Son of Gimli. Devarin, son of Gimli, but we're gonna have our 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 uh, our title our, our our town here named Devarin. Good call there, Jamie. Thank you so much for the suggestion. All right. Da, 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 da. All right. Cool. So Devarin is the name of our our town, and we're gonna populate this town. Now, sometimes when you want to populate your town, uh, in your world, you might have more humans, more elves, more. Uh, dwarves or more uh, halflings or maybe you don't have dragonborns maybe you don't have elves maybe the the dwarves were all mysteriously killed a thousand years ago and they've been lost to the ages 
There's a lot of ways to play it, and it doesn't need to play a certain way. But there's how that goes. Um, in chat here, we got Secluded Moment saying, I have a one-shot to run in a festival celebrating arts and culture. I'm here to get inspired for NPCs at that festival. I hope to give you a little bit of something on there because a Harvest Festival has actually been part of the larger uh, scheme of things when I've been sending my uh, players uh, the last seven weeks here on Character Creation through a little mini-adventure as it goes. Um, had a little bit of a harvest festival there. There's Zion. I repeat, Dragonborn Baker. Hey, Zion Solaris. It doesn't mean that you can't have a, a. You can't make the. You can't just have to roll on these things. Choose it. Absolutely. Uh, but we're gonna have some even more fun on this stuff by doing. I am a voice actor, so I am gonna be doing a little bit of uh, voice work uh, in the midst of all of this as well because I'm not gonna say no to that. Why would I? So <laughs> let's make our first NPC. Let's make our first NPC here. No, I love Dragonborns. That idea is in my head, not because of the list. <laughs> and you know what? Love your Dragonborns. Absolutely. Have a whole have a whole city full of them. I'm sure you'd love one of those things, right? Absolutely. Why not? Not a problem in the world with it. Okay. So we're gonna be rolling our first uh, our first uh, our first thing here. Actually, nope, not with the uh, D20. We're gonna roll the D10. So here's our first one that we're gonna do. Ready? Here we go. Can we make a pixie? Uh, secluded moment. I mean, we can. Um, again, I'm going off of the common races because the common races are, uh, are common and they are, uh, they have easier names to go off of, but there is no reason we can't use, you can't use any of these things and just make and just, and, and bypass the table and, and just go right into a thing there. But we might be able to make a pixie. We'll, we'll see, we'll see how, we'll see how time goes and we'll see how, what people want to see and we'll, we'll see where we go from there. Absolutely. We'll see what's going on. But you know, it's it's fantasy, but we also want to make it a little bit more grounded on this kind of stuff. I think people sometimes go towards dragonborns and pixies, secluded moment. I want to kind of address this for a second. I think some people go for the super exotic races and even the monster races because they seem interesting. Because they're not common. My contention, though, always has been, doesn't matter about the race. It doesn't matter... Whether they're common or exotic or or um, just, you know, completely out of left field where you're mixing races together to create a magical mix of them. They're, in, they're interesting because you make them interesting. And that's always been my contention. So we could probably do that, though, with a pixie. Who knows? We'll see what happens. Spell scale, but that's 3.5. Now, do not know 3.5. I know 5th edition. That's my only uh, thing on that. All right, here we go. First one. So we're going to roll our D10. If it is a D10, I do have an exotic race. It is a five, which means we have a half elf. Okay, so our first our first character is going to be a half elf. Now, what role are they going to have in our town? I'm trying to keep track of everything here on my screen. <laughs> so we're going to go now over to, this is a fun little chart that I made. This is a chart of starter town NPCs here. So we have all sorts of different things here. And yes, there are going to be roles on here that you think of that aren't on this list. And yes, a one is a town drunk. I did that for a reason. And 20 is the mayor of the elders. So I made this for funsies. And th yes, there's plenty of different things here. Okay. And we don't have to make, well, because it was a half elf or because it was a halfling or because it was a dragonborn. It needs to have a certain thing. No, that's that's stereotyping. We're not going to do that. We're going to do all this. So let's roll. Let's roll a big old D20 on this one. Here we go. What's our half elf going to be? 14. The trading post shopkeep. Okay. So we have an actual trading post within this place. Is this chart anywhere I can save for world building? Or have you made it to buy anywhere to support? Because that's awesome. Uh, Zion Solaris. It is not available now, but I will be posting this on my Twitter after the episode is is over and you can just grab it for free. You don't need to, uh, to support this thing. I made this thing in like 15 minutes. And you know what? I'm happy for you to just take it and use it. I'm going to have um, all the tables actually that I'm making today are going to be up there on my Twitter um, on that. And you can find it out there again at uh, exclamation point Lucas. You can find that on my Twitter at uh, Lucas the VA Ninja on Twitter. Doing voices you don't hear coming. <laughs> so the role is now... The shopkeep. All right. But that's all fine and well, but this NPC that we're going to meet is going to be a, is, there's going to be more about them, right? 
There's not just going to be a half elf that runs the, the shop because the players are going to come in. They're going to want to know who this person is. Where did they come from? Oh, don't worry. I got you covered. Let's roll a D4 and figure out how old this half elf is, is if you will. And we're going to roll our elder dice. Two. So they are a young adult. Okay. Young adult. Thank you for so much for the 100 biddies, Zion Solaris. Appreciate that so much. So uh, young adult, young adult, half-elf. Half-elves live to be about 150, if my memory serves correctly. They reach age, they reach adulthood about the same time humans do. So we're going to make them, we're going to make them 29. Whoops. Let's put that in the actual <laughs> chart. There we go. 29. What color are their eyes? No, I couldn't put all of the colors of the eyes out there on, on a D6, but you know what? Let's do it. They have blue eyes. Okay. What color is their hair? White. Oh, they are like a like a platinum uh, kind of uh, silvery kind of uh, hair like this. Perhaps it uh, hangs a little bit down, almost like almost like a mullet. Uh, almost, but just not 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 long enough to be a mullet. But down, it's a little bit more shaggy than anything else. There, they're proud of their their silver hair that they have at a young age. What kind of clothing are they wearing? Wow! <laughs> Didn't make it in there. Four. They have a flowing robe. Okay, they have a robe. So they have a kind of a. They kind of uh, carry themselves in this kind of a robe, maybe with the the uh, the symbol of the uh, the guild of the trading post, perhaps actually on their uh, on their person. And now here comes my fun part. This is the voice. Now I'm. This is the one table that I did not make today. This is the one table that I did not make today. Uh, I'm pulling this from uh, a Patreon that's out there. Patreon.com slash bonus action. One word bonus action. Go check it out. You can also go check out Tim's work on Instagram at Instagram.com uh, slash bonus underscore action. Uh, and you can find out more from what he's doing. He makes a lot of great things. There's magic items and things like this. But this is a voice acting table. I know this is very small text. I apologize for this. Uh, this will be the one thing that I will not be sharing on Twitter because I want you to go out there and support him. Patreon.com slash bonus action and Instagram uh, at bonus underscore action. Find Tim what he's doing. Zion Solaris, thank you so much for the tier one sub. Appreciate it so much there. Uh, da, 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 da. Here we go. So we're going to roll a D100 now. We're going to figure out how this how this individual talks. Okay. Here we go. Roll the Elder Dice. These are the Cthulhu Dice. Whoa, there's the Cthulhu there the, for a zero, zero. And then that is a nine. He has a Spanish accent. <laughs> <laughs> Spanish accent. I'm going to apologize right now for all of you that have that know Spanish or are from Spain because I'm going to screw this up something fierce. <laughs> I have two Spanish accents, Cheech Marin and Speedy Gonzalez, and that's all I've got. No, I'm sorry. No, not not, not Speedy Gonzalez. Cheech Marin and Slowpoke Rodriguez, Speedy Gonzalez's cousin. Oh, yes. Um, there it is. My name is Inigo Montoya. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh, man. I'm definitely the sort of stream and create trivia I enjoy. Definitely stick around as much as I can. Thank you, Zion Solaris. Appreciate it so much there. So, as far as our, our, uh, our half-elf, uh, shopkeeper, we're going to get a name for that person in a second here. Um, they have a Spanish accent. I would have had a hard time with a Spanish accent too. <laughs> I've done Spanish accents in voiceover before, but and you know I've done it for video games and things. But um, and actually, I just had a uh, 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 a game that I uh, that I did uh, for Desperados Three, and that was uh, Hector Mendoza. So there's that. Also, can I just say really cool? To do oh, thank you, Zion Solaris. Yeah, doing the Wasteland Three and the Patriarch was really fun. June third next week, Battle of Steel Town comes out. You can hear more Patriarch in there, so that's gonna be really fun. Thank you so much, though. Appreciate it. <laughs> well, aren't you just a bright ray of sunshine, Zion? <laughs> there you go. All right, let's get a name for this this uh, this person. So we're gonna pull up the uh, Xanathar's Guide to Everything here, and I'm going into the back now for the. Uh, if you ignore the post-it note that's shimmering, that's shaking and shimmying, oh! we're going into the uh, appendix of names here. So. Um, we're going to go into the uh, half-elf 
here. Oh, and you know what? Let's do this. All right. D6. Uh, one or two is male. Two or uh, one or two is one or two is male. Three or four is female. Five or six, non-binary. They're male. It's a one. Okay. So we're gonna get a half elf. We're gonna get a half elf. Come on. So let's give them. Oh, this doesn't have half elf names because elf and human kind of a thing. Okay. All right. Here we go. So we're going to give them, let's see here. Okay, we're going to go off of the elf male adult name. Actually, you know what? Let's call it. One, two, three, elf first, uh, elf first name, four, five, six, uh, human uh, first name. Five. Okay, it's human. And you know what? Because they're Spanish, I have a Spanish list in the back here. <laughs> so let's do it. Why not? Let's have some fun. Here we go. Spanish. Male. Very last page. <laughs> Very last page in the book. Let's go with D100, and then we'll give them a, a, an elven last name. Ooh, that was a spinny. Zero seven. Anthon. A-N-T-H-O-N. Okay. And then let's go for an elven family name. We say the uh, family, uh, the uh, father was Elvin. And Elf family. Got it. All right, cool. Here we go. Oh, it extends over two pages. Here we go. All right. And gosh, I keep on rolling the zeros. Zero, eight, zero, nine, zero, seven. <laughs> that is stacked. Aresius. Aresius. A R. I E S S U S. Anthonoresius. There it is. So Anthonoresius runs the trading post in the town of Duvarin. You, as the party, decide that you need to go uh, search for supplies. You find this. Uh, you find this well-kept sign hanging up above uh, the uh, trading the the trading post that marks the uh, no no words on it. But uh, that says that welcomes the uh, travelers over to this uh, to this rather um, well stocked trading post inside of this small town. Zion Solaris, thank you so much for the uh, for the gift sub for Punkelnix. The uh, the party uh, pushes open uh, the door uh, pushes open the doors almost like a saloon into this trading post. You see. Uh, uh, almost like a general store, but there are, but there's a smell in the air of, uh, there's a, uh, seems kind of almost like a, a bit of lavender, maybe? Uh, but it's definitely an herbal smell that fills your nostrils as you enter there. Behind uh, a counter uh, over to your immediate left, you see a younger looking, um, although some slightly pointed ears on uh, poking out behind the mop of white hair. Uh, on this half elf shopkeep, uh, piercing blue eyes, wearing a rather uh, interesting, um, very uh, not flowing, but rather a uh, a very tightly made and well stitched green robe. Um, the the blue eyes lock lock onto yours as the half elf says, "Oh, hello! Uh, I didn't hear you come in. <laughs> I'll have to put some oil some the." Put, puts uh, too much oil on those uh, those si the swinging doors. Um, my name is Anton. Uh, my name is uh, Anton uh, Arisius, and I'd uh, like to welcome you to my shop. Uh, what can I what can I find help you find today? And there you go. There's your first NPC, everybody. There's your first NPC. A couple of rolls, a couple of ideas, and just a little bit of imagination. You can start to see this person. Uh, I just threw some ideas together, and bam, there it is. Nothing crazy. Anton Aresius, our first NPC. Let's go back and let's make another. Thank you, sir. May I have another? You may indeed. Let's go. <laughs> let's do this. Here we go. Next one. Here comes our D10. Uh, we're going to roll a different D10 from our uh, Humblewood. Oh! We got an exotic race, yo! We got an exotic race! 
Oh, if only there was a table for this. Oh, wait. Achoo. There is. <laughs> now, what do I have on the exotic races today? I've got Arakokra, Azamar, Furbolg, Genasi, Goblin, Goliath, Kanku, Minotaur, Tabaxi, Triton. Now, I know that's not everybody. I certainly know there's not a Pixie on there. No Loxodon. No, it doesn't mean that we can't have one. It doesn't mean that you can't. Again, it doesn't mean, though, that the Loxodon or the Pixie is better because they're a Loxodon, because they're a Pixie. I just, you know, we're trying to do this for simplicity's sake, but we're doing all this one here. Here's the goal. <laughs> Gonna get exotic. I mean, somebody called it. That's right. I like, I like how it was the Humblewood dice, which is basically all of the exotic race. <laughs> all right, here we go. Let's try it. Now, if this rolls a one because it's Humblewood and it's all birds, I'm going to be happy about this. But that's, a, that's fine. There, no problem either way. Let's do it. Eight. It's a Minotaur. Somebody called it in chat. Oh, we got a Minotaur. All right. Our next one is a Minotaur. What job is the Minotaur going to have? Oh, man. <laughs> we have Musators up here, says uh, says Secluded Moment. I, I believe you. I believe you. All right, let's go to our rolls. What job is the Minotaur going to have in our town? <laughs> oh, baby. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> They're the mayor! They're the village chief! Yes! That's the crocking dice right there with a the natural 20 on the top of that! Woo! <laughs> I wanted it! I wanted it! Oh! The mayor tour! The mayor tour is here! They're the mayor! Yes! Uh, or the elder, or the thing. Hey, who knows? We might roll up another natural 20, and there's two people that run it. Who knows? Could be anything, right? Oh! This is fun. This is fun. <laughs> okay. I happen to know this because I was making uh, some Minotaur characters up here. Uh, the other day, it's another, the, uh, the age of a Minotaur is also going to be, uh, 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 250 years. So let's, let's go off of the, how old are they? If this is an adolescent, I'm going to lose my mind. Gosh, darn it. It's an adolescent. It's a young Minotaur. That's <laughs> a one. <laughs> oh, jeez. Okay. We're gonna make this person 18. Here we go. I know that's not adolescent. I know, I know, I know. But we're gonna make them not to adulthood yet, basically. So a young Minotaur basically just inherited the responsibilities of running this town. It doesn't mean that they're stupid. It doesn't mean that they're incapable. It just means that they're a big freaking character and they just inherited it, maybe from the Minotaur that just that used to run this place, and now they're in this new place. You know what I love about this? Think about it. You get to a starting town. There's a Minotaur running the place, but they're young, and they don't know what they're doing. You don't think there's going to be some things happening in that town? Oh, there's going to be things happening in that town that they can't stop, that they don't have any control over. They're learning how the world works. Absolutely. Everybody starts off young and inexperienced. Yeah. This could be a fun backstory. Absolutely. No one wanted to run it and they all voted for him. That could be a thing there, Zion. It could be that. But I mean, to, to vote for a young Minotaur to run things? I'd like to think that they inherited it. But hey, maybe. Maybe they don't know that, he, that he's, you know. Or maybe that there was problems, right? Maybe there was like bandits that used to come over to town and beat up people, and they were like, you know what? Nobody messes with a Minotaur. We'll just put that person in charge. Um, what? Who put me in charge? You know, whatever. <laughs> There's a lot of things like that that could happen. Could be thematic, whatever it is. Let's figure it out, though. What color is the Minotaur's eyes? Green. Aw, nice. Color is their hair. White again? 
you know what? I'm going to I'm going to override that and just go they don't have hair. Actually, you know what? We're going to go fur color on this one. So we're going to go fur color on this one and we're going to go uh we're going to reroll it. Uh no. Not blonde. That doesn't really work for fur, does it? All right. So we're going to go we're going to go dark fur. We're going to go dark fur. I'm going to override that one just because Minotaur. It's exotic. Sometimes you got to do that with exotic races. Um, I'm also going to put them also in a um, emblem coat. We're going to also put them. I'm going to override that as well because they're the mayor. So they have to have this. But now here's the fun part. I'm not going to override this one. We're going to see what they talk like. Here we go with the voice acting. Uh, maybe they chose their leaders by athletic contest. That could be. Could be a thing there. Young, bright-eyed Minotaur who isn't jaded yet. Maybe. That's a good... Yeah, these are good ideas. Y'all having really, really great ideas. Okay, let's do it again. You know what? We'll, we'll roll the Humblewood dice because it got us the Minotaur. <laughs> Here we go. 27. Loud with a lot of bravado. I mean, hello. Hello. <laughs> yes yes queen oh <laughs> could this be any more perfect oh one off oh i tried to curse the dice to roll oh. <laughs> we're gonna go uh we're gonna go greek names on this one we're going to go Greek names on this one. 86 on the Greek names. It seems to kind of be a nice for a Minotaur. Obviously, they could have any name we want, but yeah. We're going to go Greek on this one. It seems seems fitting. And uh, we're going to go for Patroclos. Patroclos. P-A-T-R-O. Making sure I get it right. Got it. And, um, hmm. We're just going to leave it at that. Mayor Patroclus. I was going to say 28 in chat. Oh, <laughs> there we go. Nice. Patroclus, the mayor. Uh, we'll also call them, um, uh, We're gonna call. We're gonna give him a nickname of Peter, <laughs> or Pat. Pat works, doesn't it? Mayor Pat. Oh, you gotta go see Mayor Pat. Oh, Mayor Pat. Mayor Pat sounds fine. Mayor Pat is. Oh, hello. <laughs> so, Anton Ares 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 Anton Aresis uh, walks the party through some purchases. And after hearing some rumors about uh, about gearing up for certain um, certain problems that might be in town and uh, hearing things like, uh, you know, well, you know, you might want to uh, get some... Uh, uh, if you don't have any, uh, any um, <clears throat> daggers for what uh, your... Uh, carrying on you you might want to have a couple of them we've been having a few troubles of, around town but nothing you should worry about uh and the party says what what troubles anything anything we should be aware of oh no 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 nothing at all um it's uh we have a new mayor in town and mayor pat uh he's doing well uh but uh, he's new and so uh there are people out there that uh, have been trying to take advantage of uh, the situation with uh, new um, new ownership, uh, new uh, new individuals that have been um, <laughs> new management, if you will, uh, in in the town of Duvalin, Duvarin. So uh, it just um, be aware, and uh, perhaps you could do this. Well, could you tell us where we could find this Mayor Pat? I um, I really wouldn't disturb him right now. He's uh, he's got a lot on his plate right now. No, but if we wanted to actually go over and offer our services, we're you know we're travelers and. We might, we've actually done some help for other, you know, other groups out there. If there's anything we can't do to make your town a little 
safer, then maybe we can do that. Well, uh, I guess you could, uh, sure. There's, uh, his, uh, town, his, uh, is in the, uh, the largest house on the hill. Uh, you'll see it. It has, uh, two chimneys on the other side. Oh, thank you. And the party makes their way over to this, uh, the, the small hill that rises just a little bit over the side of Duvarin. Um, the stream, uh, heading off behind the hill, um, kind of curving around as it does through the, uh, through the, through the town proper. As it goes through here, uh, the, uh, the party makes their way over, and as they uh, hear this, uh, an individual, uh, as they get close to the, uh, the, 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 the house itself, the, the, about 10 feet away from there, the doors burst open, and a small, and a small, and a, a young woman comes running out of the, of the front of this house, crying, and just holding her, <laughs> and just runs away. Uh, the party is unable to to stop them as, as she runs away, almost running into them, but then kind of making a you know, kind of a right angle and just moving away. They hear from the other side of there. I don't need your help. If I needed your help, I'll come ask for it. And the party is taken aback just a little bit, and uh, they hear <laughs> as someone is coming closer to the doors, and as this. And as 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 a as a head ducks down beneath the doors to reach down and close them, the party sees a six and a half foot tall minotaur, sharp sharp but not long horns protruding out of a uh, a, a a a a bead of dark fur around uh, a snout that seems to come out uh, again not not as far as it as it could be. Uh, any insight checks or medicine checks or history checks might be able to successfully tell that this is a young minotaur, uh, rather rather young minotaur, um, and possibly short for their age. Um, the the minotaur seems to look look over and see a, a band of new people and goes, <sighs> "Just what I need right now, travelers." Well, um, well. Uh, Oh, how do I do this again? Um, <clears throat> and steps outside, closing doors behind them, uh, polishing off this uh, rather nice uh, looking yellow jacket with like a green emblem uh, of the, of the uh, looks like a dwarven uh, rune. For those of you who read dwarven can see that there's a dwarven room for the letter D, which would, you would assume means the city of Duvarin. Um, uh kind of uh, cleans himself off, dusts, him, dusts himself off, and uh, puts his hands behind his back and stands up straight and goes, <clears throat> I, uh, on behalf of the citizens of uh, Duvarin, I would like to welcome you to our fine city. And um, I, uh, uh, Mayor Pat, uh, I'm Patroclus, Patroclus, uh, if, you, if you would uh, need... What brings you to our town, fair travelers? <laughs> what an entrance, right? What an entrance. And that's not, I, mean, I didn't write that. I didn't, and it's not like you need to be able to do that kind of voice or write that kind of thing. But just being able to have some kind of setting and scene happen, it creates this kind of idea. And we kind of created all of this from random roles. And yeah, we, we, we forced a few of them to happen, but yeah. But there it is. Let's make a new character, right? Let's do a new one. You know what? We rolled another D10. Let's roll another D10. Here we go. You know, ooh, I'm going to use my Wormwood dice. This one. Have my Merlot dice up here. So this is my Merlot dice. Whoop, what is that? Ooh, that's a nine. That's a nine. Ooh, we got a tiefling. We got a tiefling in town, baby. Baby. All right, what's our tiefling gonna do in our town? Let's move it over to the starter town. Uh, we're gonna roll this 18. Oh, we got a criminal in town. A tiefling criminal. Oh. Now, there are plenty of things that a criminal can do in town, a thief can do in town. And by the way, it doesn't mean that they're currently a criminal. Maybe it means that they're retired. Maybe it means that they're a former. Maybe it means that they're just like a representative of the Thieves Guild. Who knows? Maybe they're not actually a, a criminal, but they have some sort of like front. But someone in town knows what they do. 
You know, there's a lot of ways to play it. Just because you're a criminal doesn't mean that they have to walk around and act like a criminal, all shady and stuff like that, right? There's a lot of things to do this one well. But let's talk about who this character is. This tiefling. Three, middle-aged. Okay. Well, lost my pointer. <laughs> middle-aged tiefling. Uh, we're going to say... We're going to say... Uh, let's roll a d10. 46. Okay. 46. What color are their eyes? Red eyes. We rolled it. We rolled it. You see it right here. Red eyes on the tiefling. You got it. <laughs> uh, sure, they're going to have hair. What is it with the white hair? Okay. Okay. This is ridiculous. Thank you. Black hair. I'm not going to let everybody have white hair. Not everybody has white hair in this town, gosh darn it. No. And yeah, that could be a plot point for all you want. But <laughs> I'm going to override things sometimes, darn it. Uh, clothing. There's only, a, I mean, it's only a D6. I mean, you could come up with obviously a lot more flavorful kind of hair colors and eye colors and clothing styles. But there's that. Uh, meh. Yeah, we're going to override that one. Uh, simple fabrics. We're going to go simple fabrics on this one. Move that along. There we go. What are they going to sound like? Here we go. I mean, that, that Zion Solaris, there could be a thing that's causing white hair. But, I mean, we're just creating things, obviously. Um, but maybe people's hair is white, even though it isn't white. And then that can be a plot point. It could be a lot of things. But then, I want you to know what we're doing there, Zion Solaris, is what we're doing then is we're creating plot points. And we're not creating characters. The whole point of here is creating characters. We can always amend things later. Plot points can happen, but yes, that's definitely a thing. Yeah. Okay. Uh, D100. Where are you at? Where are you at? I can't find it. Oh, I'm going to roll my custom dice. Yeah, that's a good one. 25. Scottish accent. Are you kidding me? Oh, Scottish accent for the tiefling. <laughs> What's the tiefling's name? Here we go. Uh, let's roll. Let's roll to see if they are male, female, or non-binary. Non-binary. All right. Cool. Non-binary tiefling. Here we go. Uh, who made those? My may I ask? Uh, these ones here were made by a fan of mine, friend of mine. Uh, her name is Muzzy Tenno, aka Confused Warframe, and uh, she sent them to me. Because she's so nice. Um, but yeah, they were very nice. She she handmade those. Uh, da -da 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 okay, so you know what? We're going to roll a D100 for the tiefling. Because they're uh, non-binary, we're not going to go male-female. We're going to use uh, on, the, on the Xanathar's Guide chart. And if you've ever worked with making tieflings, there are there's a virtue name list here on the last column. There's a virtue name list, which means basically it's you know it's like a like a nickname, almost. So we're gonna know what they're what they call themselves. Fifty-seven. <laughs> Mockery. That's their that's their nickname. We can come up with their name later, obviously. But you know what? For a criminal or a thief, mockery so, so, sounds good. And you know what? You know what we'll do? We'll say. That their name is, uh, they just call him Mock. There it is. That's their name. So Mock, the tiefling criminal, middle-aged, with red eyes, black hair, simple fat, simple fabrics, and is in a Scottish accent. Uh, after having an exchange with uh, Mayor Pat, as he's known, uh, the party finds out that. Uh, there are there's a lot of uh, discomfort within the, the city of Duvarin because um, Mayor Pat has ba had basically taken over after a very uh, well known other mayor, his grandfather, the uh, who was this very strong, very intimidating presence, uh, 
but also very benevolent uh, uh, minotaur uh, mayor, the former mayor, was done. He kept a lot of the, um, he passed away, and he kept a lot of the uh, uh, problems, <laughs> so to speak, from coming into town. Uh, and now that there are, now, with his passing almost a month ago, Pat has been trying to take over for the, the town itself, but is not exactly doing well in a lot of people's eyes. So a lot of people have been trying to come to him and say, we need your help to do this. And he doesn't have that much of a understanding of how things work yet. So he's been appointed because... Maybe another Minotaur will slow things down. Who knows? So he's trying to do this. This is what the woman was running from. Uh, she was upset because there were people that were, you know, basically vandalizing uh, her farm out on the uh, on the outskirts of Duvarin. And so hearing about this, the party says, well, maybe we'll go and look into where these uh, criminals could be coming along from. And as they make their way uh, down into the thoroughfare again, they... Uh, there, there's a, there's a, um, they walk by this uh, uh, alleyway between two houses, and there is a, uh, a voice that goes, psst, psst. And uh, one of the more perceptive individuals of the party looks over and sees this um, uh, rather simple uh, uh, clothing on a, uh, on a green-skinned tiefling. Um, Simple, uh, simple horns that seem to kind of go back. Uh, you know, they don't curve. They just kind of go back along this black hairline that kind of recedes a little bit. Um, kind of a couple of age lines across the cheekbones, but uh, not sullen, but rather just uh, slim and slender and svelte on this on this tiefling. Uh, a small um, goatee along this uh, tiefling as well, and um, simply um, has this very smirk on his face. Uh, on their face, I should say, as um, <clears throat> the tiefling says to the person who uh, did that. So I understand you're going to be uh, looking for some uh, trouble here in town. But um, I'll tell you this, the uh, mayor Pat might be a, a good soul, but uh, he doesn't have a lot of, uh, he doesn't have the uh, expertise that you might be looking for. Then again, if you had somebody that uh, knew these people, knew exactly how they used to run, they might be able to help you out with that. If you're uh, interested in having a fellow tag along. The paladin of the party steps up and just kind of goes, wait, 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 wait. What do you mean? What do you mean that you know how these criminals run? Hey, I'm not here to, I'm not here to split hairs. I'm just here to help out where I can. If you don't need my help, I'm sure a big strong lad like yourself uh, certainly doesn't need uh, the qualifications of uh, well, an individual like myself that seems to stand out in the crowd. Uh, they always did call me a little bit green around the gills, but uh, <laughs> I think you can see why. Well, wh who the heck are you? Well, they call me Mock. I uh, seem to do a little bit of a mock-up for what you do. And uh, for those of you, for those people out there in my uh, profession, uh, I uh, maybe have earned a uh, title for mocking the trade, as it will. But uh, if you need my help, then uh, for a price, I might be able to uh, give you a bit of help. And the penny pincher of the of the group goes, "Whoa, whoa, 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 whoa! We're not we're not paying some random person we met on the street to go help that." Mock puts up his hands and goes, "Well, I'll tell you what. You can find me over at the tavern. I'm usually playing cards and usually winning. So if you need my help, come over and see me there." And he walks away. They walk away. <laughs> there we go. There's our third character of our starting town. So we've got a shopkeep in the trading post. We've got a minotaur mayor. And we've got some shady looking green skinned tiefling who's, a, who's, a comp, who's accosted the party so far. This is setting up to be a great starting town. Let's get started one more time. Here we go. Oh, which, which role am I rolling now? Hmm. Let's go for the uh, Elder Dice one more time. Four. We've got a gnome in town, everybody. Okay. What role does this gnome have in our town? 
Okay, let's see here. D20. Uh, we're gonna roll. I'm gonna roll my wormwood one. Fourteen. That's the trading post shopkeep. So we're gonna roll that again. Eighteen. That's the criminal or thief. No, we're not getting two of them. Nineteen. They are a jeweler or a a metallurgist or a tinkerer of some kind. Okay, good for a gnome. That kind of fits. Nice like that. Sure. <laughs> could be the sheriff. Yeah, we definitely could see the sheriff. I do have that on there. It's kind of an officer or a warden or a sheriff, some sort of law keep peacekeeping officer. And again, doesn't mean that we have to have that. Maybe the mayor is the one that, that acts as the, the law enforcement. These things are, these obviously things are very uh, ones that can, uh, you know, be interchanged and multiple people can have multiple roles uh, within the town, especially if, again, it's a starting town. So that, that kind of a thing there. Now, gnomes, oh, geez. Oh, gosh. I forgot my ages for gnomes here. So let's go over to my gnomes. I know they can get to be pretty old. So let's see here. What are the ages for gnomes? Uh, they reach adult life by around age 40. They can live to be 350 to almost 500 years old. So this is going to be interesting. D4. Here we go. Three, middle-aged. Sorry, didn't pull that up. <laughs> middle-aged. So, oof. all right, we're going to say that they are, uh, let's see here. We're going to roll, we're going to say they are 200 and what? No. We're going to say they're 100 and 51. 151. Sorry. <laughs> Just knocked my microphone. Apologies. Uh, okay. 151. What color eyes do they have? Gray eyes. Ooh. <sighs> color hair do they have? Multicolored. Hey. All right. Multicolored. <laughs> I know what we're going to do with this one. I know what they're going to do. Jeweler, shopkeep, criminal, and a mayor seems like a good plot start. I mean, you're not you're not wrong there, Triple L77. <laughs> oh, I haven't even been thanking people. I want to uh, thank people as well here. Uh, OCD6000, uh, thank you so much for the follow. That was like 30 minutes ago. Possibilities are on that one. Um, okay. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Okay, here we go. No, we don't need to uh, roll twice, I don't think. Uh, I don't think we need to roll twice. It's a matter of just uh, having, you know, what we have, though. Uh, again, we'll make our town, and that'll be our town. But if, like, there's no farmers listed, if there's no bakers, if there's no um, other... If you make one, literally, that has no shopkeeps, doesn't mean that there's no shops in town. That's silly. Doesn't mean that there's no place to stay, like an inn or an, a tavern. Mock said he was going to go stay at the inn anyway, or the, uh, the tavern. He was going to be playing cards. Okay. So let's do this. Two. Simple fabrics. Okay, cool. Ooh, a little classical music right now playing on our, uh, playing on our pretzel rocks. Now, what voice is it going to have? This is mainly for me. I love doing this stuff because it's fun. <laughs> All right. I'm going to use the humble wood dice. 65. Thin and often mumbling. Okay. So they're a jeweler. They're a jeweler. And let's figure out what their name is going to be. Uh, okay. Here we go. Female. They're going to be female. All right, need a female gnome. Female gnome with multicolored hair in her middle age. I love it. Oh, she's great. Female gnome, let us roll. 74. Shamil. 
Shamil. Gnome Clan. D100 again. 06. Gosh, with the O's today. Baron. B E B E R E N. Uh, no, not, not Marine. Ah! Ah! There we go. Shamil Baron. Baron's Jewelers. Baron's Boutique. We'll call it Baron's Boutique. <laughs> Baron's Boutique. So, as Mock walks away from this, uh, from this alleyway, uh, the paladin uh, of the group uh, walks one. Hey, hey, I'm not done with you yet. And uh, next to uh, next to them, uh, the uh, the door opens to the shop of the alleyway that they were next to. And uh, a small voice, Baron's Bobbles. Oh, trip. That's great. Baron's Bobbles. I like Baron's Bobbles. We'll, we'll, we'll go with Baron's Bobbles. That's nice. I'm going to make a little note on that. That's nice. Good call. Good call there. <laughs> this uh, and a small voice, thin, uh, in the air, seems to come down almost from the ground, as uh, that as the as the player uh, hears. Oh well, I wouldn't I wouldn't give him too much trouble. He he speaks a, a loud game, but I I wouldn't give him too much too much there. Um, sorry about him though. He's he's a good egg though. He really is. And the paladin looks uh, looks over and then down and then sees uh, a, um, a rather uh, a rather a sight a uh, a a female gnome uh, wrapped in what looks like a kind of a um, almost like a windbreaker but it's just this very kind of like uh, uh, rather delicate looking uh, white and gold patterned kind of uh, um, stitched shirt kind of like those Chinese uh, robes that uh, those Chong Pao's that like that like button from like the the front, but she's got this very very simple kind of uh, but it's simple and uh, simple buttons basically and without like uh, with braids or ties it's just like a simple button white and gold fabric, um, um, rather 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 uh, interesting though gray uh, big gray eyes uh, looking out through spectacles and um, a shock of of purple hair. Uh, that that seems to kind of almost go out like an afro at once, and then it kind of at the tips it turns red. Um, rather rather an odd looking uh, individual there, kind of taken aback for a quick second, and then goes, "I'm sorry about him though. He's he's well, he has his moments though, but he's a, he means well in the end. Um, but please, uh, for a little bit more civilized conversation, please." please Step inside. It's rather, it's rather chilly out here today. And she walks into the, uh, into the, uh, into the shop. Uh, the most perceptive of the group uh, notices a sign that says Baron's Baubles. And you can see kind of there's a uh, window display where there are, um, there's like a, a bust mannequin of just like a neck with like a very fine piece of a, of a ruby necklace around the side there. Uh, but it's, under lock and key. The rogue gets a little sticky fingers, but realizes this is pretty well under lock and key. Um, the wizard walks in through the, through the doors and immediately feels an, an interesting uh, th uh, uh, presence in the air, waves his hands and casts detect magic and notices that there is a very strong abjuration uh, magic that seems to kind of be almost in the air around this thing. And deduces through our successful arcana check that this shop is protected from thieves, as a jeweler might want them to be. So, uh, stepping onto a step stool, which goes onto another, another kind of a bar stool, um, the um, the gnome uh, uh, sits down and uh, gestures everyone to come over to the counter. And those who do who seem to go over there. My name is my, my name is Shamel Shamel Baron, owner of Baron's Bobbles. Um, I've been here for a very, very long time. I knew the previous uh, administration here, who used to uh, run things here in Dvorin. <sighs> oh, a wonderful, beautiful soul, if not a bit troubled by his past. But um, we shared tea many, many nights, and uh, we all mourn his passing. But um, young Pat young Patro uh, Patroclos is doing well. <laughs> he's doing, he's doing his, he's doing his best, really. 
And, um, well, I, again, though, I'm sorry about what happened outside. Uh, that, uh, that mockery is a, a bit of a, uh, bit of a, bit of a loud mouth, but, um, but he means well, and, uh, he does actually have some connections in town, and dare I say it, but I'm a little f feared for my shop, and mm, if, uh, if there was anyone that could actually help you, I dare say that Mark would actually be the one, but he's always negotiable. Don't think that we have to pay exactly what he says. He might be very helpful in your in your tasks. And there's Baron. Four people in our town, people. We did four 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 members of our town in an hour with a plot point. We're actually kind of like stitching together plots as we go. I'm loving this. I think this is great. I've never done this, by the way. I literally made these tables up a couple days ago. <laughs> And it's just like, let's see what happens. So I'm having fun. I'm having fun with this. Um, okay. Do 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 do. Okay. Back to the race again. Character number five. All right. Rolling the D10. Another tiefling. Let's do it again. We have an elf. All right, cool. There's an elf in town. By the way, it doesn't mean that we can have a lot of these. I mean, there's always going to be uh, NPCs that you don't meet. You can't plan for all the NPCs that your character, your party is going to meet. You know, the woman that ran out of the uh, the the mayor's house. Couldn't plan for that. That's all well. But okay, we got an elf. Uh, what role is the elf going to have in town? Roll the crack and dice. Six. A mason or a carpenter. So either a stone worker or like and a bricklayer or something like that, or a carpenter working with wood. I like the idea of working with wood, but you know what? Let's 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 uh let's just say that they are an all-around uh builder of all kind though. So we're gonna say There we go. Now, elves can be pretty darn old. Just got here. What are these dice charts from? I made these dice charts myself here, Kai Hawkeye. Uh, by the way, thank you for coming in. Um, I'm. This is all just stuff that I made up a couple of days ago uh, for basically creating NPCs for like a starter town. But you could, doesn't have to be a starter town. could be anything. And how we get to uh, uh, roll on them to just build a starter town, to build and populate your world in your TTRPG, like D&D, with uh, interesting characters. Uh, after the show is done here today, which is going to be in just about an hour, uh, we're going to be going for about another hour, and then uh, I'm going to be posting these on my Twitter. So all the all the tables that you're going to see here are, are going to be on my Twitter, with the exception of the voice acting voice acting references one here, which is over at again patreoncom slash action. Guy named Tim runs this thing. It's very cool. It's also on Instagram at bonus underscore action. You can go look this stuff up. He makes magic items and has a lot of really cool tables. And you can support him. He does a lot of cool things. So i um, not going to be sharing that one, but these these tables here. So I have an NPC race table. I have an exotic race table. We have the starter town NPCs themselves. And who are they? Sure, absolutely there, yeah. Um, yeah, very cool. Thank you, Zion Solaris, for the, uh, for the uh, putting that in chat. Appreciate it there. Okay. So now let's do uh, this elf, this Mason Carpenter in town. That's a four. They're elderly. All right, cool. Oh, boy. Elf, old elf. What are we going to do on this one? Okay. Here's how we're going to do this. <laughs> we're going to roll a D6 and to get the hundreds number, okay? And we're going to add two. No. We're going to do a D4 plus four. D4 plus four. Three plus four. That is a seven. So that's in the 700s. 789. Wow. That's, no, that's, that's up there for the elves. 789 years old. <laughs> oh my gosh. Finally, the white hair might actually work. 
<laughs> Finally, the white hair might actually work. Eye color. Green. Hair color. Darn it. Blonde, but that's okay. <laughs> Blonde. You know, elves don't really go white. They can, obviously, but elves don't have to go white. All right. He is quite the sage. Absolutely. Uh, da, 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 da. By the way, thank you so, uh, so much, uh, Velier1, for the follow. My tables are, are hanging over the uh, notifications uh, for... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, so he's been he's been he's been a, a crafter for a long time, a craftsman, a craftsperson for a long time. Let's roll their uh, their uh, non-binary. Okay, they're non-binary. One two is male, three four is female, five or six non-binary. All right, cool. So they are going to be. Uh, let's see what uh, clothing they're going to be wearing. Three leather or metal. Okay. We're gonna give them. Uh, we're gonna give them some little bit of little bit of both, a little bit of both, but mainly leather. Come on, come on. <laughs> a little bit of both, but we're probably gonna focus more on the leather. And what voice are they gonna have? Always my favorite, my favorite. All right, all right, Muzzy, what you got for me? Oh, five. Guys, I have rolled. Today I have rolled on the D100s a five, a six, a seven, an eight, and a nine. <laughs> the voice chart says low and grunting. This is again, this is the this is the Patreon. Uh, this is a Patreon bonus action. Low and grunting, which is interesting, I think, for a uh, for an elf, but I, I love it. Let's go for it. Going to, going on lurk to keep viewer coming up. I gotta go. I gotta go feeds. Go feeds, please. Do stuff. All right. And what is their name? All right. Let's pull out Xanathar's guide. Open it up to the elves. Let's see what we get. Hmm. Family name. Let's go for the family name first. Eighty-five. 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 85 is, ooh, Silveranth. That is the name of the, um, that is the family name. That's a heck of, that's an elven name right there. Silveranth. Ooh, ho, ho, ho. And then we're going to do this. I'm going to, I'm going to roll the D100 for this one. Okay. That's 56. Okay. And then I'm going to roll high or low on the D6. One. So it's low. So we're going to go uh, what's first What's first listed here, which is the female name, but it's a non-binary uh, uh, individual. So we're going to go 56 on the female name chart. And we're going to say Leah. L-I-A. Leah Silveranth. That, that's a good name. That's a nice Elven name right there. Need to save those percentile for commune for commune rolls. Right, right, yeah. Commune or contact other plane. Oh, 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 I see. So who do you commune with, or is it contact other plane? I think you're thinking of. Commune is usually talk with your god. That's what like a cleric or a paladin'll do. I think contact other plane for like all the gods that are out there. Be a fun thing. Might be. I don't know what you're talking about. If that's what you're talking about, chaotic platypus. <laughs> okay. So Leah Silveranth, elf, mason carpenter, 789 years old, green eyes, blonde hair, wearing leather and metal with a low and grunting voice. Um, leaving Baron's baubles and heading over to... Uh, to uh, for for a bite to eat, uh, they find a small vendor uh, having a few uh, kind of like meat pies that they had out there. Um, uh, it was interesting. They have this like kind of push cart that has this kind of like little little uh, little warm hot plate basically under there. Um, perhaps a, a little bit of magic to press a digitate to them and make them and warm up the food basically for like a warm meat pie 
Which, by the way, that's a heck of a use of press digitation right there. I'll just tell you that. I'll just tell you that right there. If I was, if I was, if I was in, if I was just sidebar, if I was in D and D and I had press digitation, I'd be warming and chilling all of my food and drink because I'm a foodie. Why wouldn't you? <laughs> anyway, um. Taking these meat pies over, uh, they kind of go on the outskirts of town there, and um, they uh, are the party is kind of deciding what they what they want to do, and there's a little bit of an, a little bit of a squabble happening between the adventurers about like trusting this mock and trying to find out who it is, uh, you know what what this person may have, uh, what this tiefling might have to offer the party when it comes to the problems that have been happening in town already. And uh, the paladin is completely against it. The rogue is saying, well, we might be able to negotiate and I might be able to meet some people. The, the cleric is just kind of like dumbfounded and just kind of sitting there. And the wizard is trying to think of ways to kind of like manipulate the situation to their advantage. And after having this little conversation, this squabble, having their little meat pies and eating, uh, they're out under a tree, you know, behind the whole thing. They all hear all of a sudden from above them in the tree. Going to trust that one, are you? Well, <laughs> all the more power to you. And they all kind of look up at once. And <laughs> with a hatchet in hand, um, a couple of people um, who have bad insight checks just kind of leap up and pull out their weapons. Woo! Ah, what? But this person just, just without even moving, just kind of looks all of them over. And they see this um, rather, rather uh, short for an elf, but... Um, very dignified, blonde hair uh, tied back in a very long plate, uh, which uh, plated braid, which can, which kind of comes down there, and it's like not even a hair of this plate is out of place, meticulously done, piercing green eyes, almond shaped kind of uh, uh, irises uh, peering down, and just kind of expertly twirls this hatchet, this hand axe, and then just kind of raises it and chops against a very thin branch, loosens it down and takes it down and uh, just goes, well, I guess if you're going to be going after Mark, then you're going to want to know what he's liable for, known that troublemaker for way too long. Listen here, Leah Silveranth, you need anything built in town, I'm the person to come to, but... Uh, when it comes to Mark, he always runs his mouth off. Tell you what, if you want to go over and meet him, meet them and uh, see see where they're at. If you want to have a little bit of an edge, as I overheard you saying, maybe what you could do is, uh, well, huh. tell you what. You tell that green-skinned little devil that Leah said this one was on the house. And if there was a problem be it, with it being on the house, that they can take it, that they can pay me what they owe me. And the paladin just kind of stows away his longsword and, um, well, thank you, uh, um, uh, Leah, for your assistance on all this. Uh, I, I don't want this to go empty-handed. I certainly don't want to owe anyone a debt. That's not how I live my life, but um, what could we do to thank you for all of this? And Leah just kind of takes the branch and takes, a, takes the hatchet and kind of starts to skin the, the smaller parts of the branch away from, uh, the, um, from the larger part of the branch. Um, kind of like, you know, starting to kind of carve a little bit of it off and just kind of goes... Well, if you can't actually do anything about those rough ruffians that are running around run around on the outside of town, come over and see me. I have that hut over there by the side. I might have uh, something else if you can prove yourself in all of this. And if you can't, well, at least I won't have uh, Mark lean, leaning down my neck about owing me anything for all this. Cheers. And then just hops down lithely from, from like 
12 feet up <laughs> without almost a sound. Stows the uh, branch over their shoulder, walks away. I like I like Leah. I like Leah. <laughs> Let's make another one. One. We got a dragonborn. We got a dragonborn. Got a dragonborn in town. <laughs> You know what I like about I, I like I like about a lot of uh, different races coming into for the same kind of town means that it's kind of like a uh, uh, it's like a it is a tra trading post you know it's like a it's like a culmination of all of these different avenues where people can come and travel through but also maybe stay and set up a life I like all that you know and it, it can it can help explain why you have all of this to happen there Dragonborn my favorite race to play that's great. But they're not interesting just because they're dragonborns. They're interesting because you make them interesting, which is what we do here on Character Creation, Kai. I love all that one there. Uh, Namavex, loving, hello, loving the spontaneity of prompts where you get pr practice in voice acting and improv. You know, that's one of the things that I love to do. You know, I'm a voice actor myself, and so I always love to have that, but we're just making this up. There's no wrong decision when you do when you go after voice acting. A lot of people, when they go after voice acting, Namavex, is they like to say, well... What voice works? What's right? Who says there has to be a right voice? It's a prompt. You just take a prompt and you run with it there. Uh, sorry, I meant divine intervention earlier for the percentile. Thank you. Yeah, I've been rolling all those low ones. Yes, the divine intervention if I was rolling so low. Oh, man. Yeah, under 10? Crazy. All right. Early on, somebody wanted a dragonborn baker in here. They've been clamoring for a dragonborn baker. If we roll an 11, dragonborn baker's coming. Oh, a seven, which is a teacher or a professor or a historian, whatever quite might make sense inside of your town. So they're a teacher, professor, historian. Uh, let's see how old they are. I'm going to make sure I'm going to write it. I'm going to write that down by the way, but, uh, whoop, I can type. How old are they? Okay, here we go. Elderly. That makes sense. I kind of wanted that. <laughs> Elderly professor. Uh, Okay. Dragonborns live to human years, right? They live to about 75, 80 years old. 70, 80, something like that. Okay. Right? I think so. I was literally looking this up just like a bit ago. They live to be around 80. Yep. Okay, cool. Got it. All right, cool. Got it, got it, got it, got it. Here we go. Uh, so we're going to make them... Uh, da, 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 da. We're going to make them 60 and then roll a D10. Of course, it's a nine. Of course, it's nine. They're 69 years old. All right, chat. Get your nices out. Get your nice out in chat. I walked into that myself. <laughs> uh, oh, shoot. I just realized. I just realized. I'm sorry. Let me uh, roll that down. There we go. So now you can see Dragon Ball 2. I didn't, I didn't realize it was going into the uh, the banner there. Nice roll. Thank you, Namavex. Come on. Everybody get him out. Come on. I know you want to. We're all 13 years old here. All right. Eye color. Gray. And again, by the way, you can override any of these things here. Thank you, Honoros. Uh, we're not going to go for hair color on this one. Uh, I'm actually going to roll on my uh, on my D10 chart that I have for that we've used for character creation here in the past, and I'm going to roll on my D10 chart for Dragonborn scale color. All right, all right, which means I got to pull that up. <laughs> I was not prepared for this. Uh, okay, hold on a second. Let me pull this up. Random numbers. Come on. All right. Uh, 
race. Dragonborn. Here we go. All right, so I'm rolling. I'm rolling a D10 on this uh, for the dragon for the Dragonborn scales. Um, so the way it works is the first five are the chromatic in alphabetical order: black, blue, green, red, white. Okay. The next five are the metallic in alphabetical order. So uh, brass, bronze, copper, gold, silver. For those of you that want to know exactly what I'm doing right now, okay. So that's the ten, and we're gonna roll on that. That's ten. Silver. There's silver. Nice. Silver Dragonborn. Silver Dragonborn scaled gray eyes. Oh. Mwah. Love this one already. Uh let's roll, let's roll it. Simple fabrics again. Okay. Simple fabrics. And my favorite. Here comes the voice acting chart on the D100. Again, I did not make this table up. For those of you who wanted to get it, patreon.com slash bonus action or Instagram at bonus underscore action. Let's roll. Where are they? Ah, there they are. <laughs> I have all my dice around here. I'm just like, what do I do? 23. Oops. Ah, that was a three. So 23. <laughs> That's a good one. Size with exhaustion a lot. <laughs> They've had enough of your tomfoolery. Male, female, non-binary. Whoa, that one bounced out. Not binary again. Jeez. We are very inclusive in this town. I love it. Dragonborn names, though, are always, always very long and complicated. We're going to do the same thing we did for the uh, elf, for the non-binary elf, where we're going to roll family name, clan name in this case, for Dragonborn. Okay? So get ready for a lot of, a lot of syllables and a lot of X's and Z's and Y's. 36. Okay, then. That's a name. <laughs> All right. <laughs> oh, boy. I'm just going to write this one out here. Because apparently I just walked into a medical ad. Hashfrenoxidin. Hashfrenoxidin. Don't at me. Hash for Noxidin. No, Nix. I'm going to go Nix. Hash for Nixidin. Hash for Nixidin. That's their, that's their clan name. Okay. Which means now we're going to roll for mailer. We're going to take the male or the female name here. We're going to roll high, low on the D6. That was high, so that's male. Okay. Uh, and then we're going to roll the D100. Another D100. Here we go. I know, doesn't it? Talk to your doctor to see if hash for Noxidin is right for you. <laughs> 71. On the mail chart. Ooh. This is a name. P-I-J-J-I-R-I-K. That. Is a dragonborn name or your cat just walked across the keyboard? Because that's a name right there. Pijurik Hashfronoxidin. No, Hashfronixidin. Hashfronixidin. I gotta say it right. Pijurik Hashfronixidin. Whoo! Whoo! That's a name. Maybe the reason that they sigh a lot is that nobody gets their name right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so stupid. All right. Pijerik Hashfronixidin, which I'm going to say that, yeah, my and, and my web captions are going <laughs> as I say that. So we're going to go here. Uh, we're going to call them PG. P 
PG is going to be their nickname. They're going to go by PG. Because nobody's going to try. And they're going to be known as Master PG. Uh, Master PG. El or elder, elder, elder. We're going to call them Elder PG. Elder PG. Or PG. It's easy enough to remember. <laughs> yeah. Not Master. We're going to go for Elder. So, taking into account what Leah said to the party, the party strikes out to the tavern and finds Mock in a rousing game of cards. <laughs> you got it, Kaihawk. You got it, Kaihawk. Very nicely done. Uh, should be hash browns. I know. I know. I know platypus. Uh, that's very good. Um, <laughs> Mockery is, in, is engaged in a spirited game of cards and laughing and drinking ale. Uh, the rogue is the one that approaches Mockery and uh, when uh, Mockery pushes their cards aside and puts his, leans back in his chair, leans back in their chair and puts their feet up on the table, um, you get uh, this uh, uh, very smug look on their face. And the rogue simply just says, um, We've uh, we've come to the understanding that uh, we do want your help, but uh, you need to do this for us uh, gratis. This one's on the house. And Mockery just laughs. Really? Well, I'd like to know exactly why. Why exactly is that going to be happening? Well, because Leah said so. Leah said, you owe them a favor. And this is the favor being cashed in. Now, if you've got a problem with that, you can obviously go talk to Leah about that. And the color... This gr bright green tiefling starts to turn a pea green as the color drains from their face. And gnashing their sharp incisors together, Mockery just slams their hand down on the table, stands up, looks the rogue in the face. <sighs> Be ready to go tomorrow morning and storms off. And feeling very accomplished with themselves, the rogue just kind of turns around and just kind of gives a gesture as if to go, that was easy. And from the other side of the bar, you hear, <laughs> and uh, the party turns around to see a, a silver scaled, uh, uh, hunched over, uh, with pristine, uh, pristine uh, scales, um, a uh, um, but a bit of dust covering the, uh, the 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 scales themselves, and a a bit of uh, 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 wearing simple leathers uh, and simple uh, just an ornament with a a bag strapped across, uh, you know, a satchel uh, scra strapped uh, from one shoulder across to the other. Uh, no tail on this dragonborn, by the way, but uh, drink, uh, drink uh, and a couple of books sat, stacked up next to their uh, next to their uh, place at the at the uh, on the you know how like a, a bar kind of has like that long place and then it, it turns and it goes like the L like the little dog leg that goes around. They're over there on the L the, uh, on the uh, dog leg part of the uh, the bar. What's going on, Kiari Queen? No, probably. Thanks for coming in. As the party, uh, uh, as this person kind of gest gestures them over, gestures the party over, um, this elderly dragonborn uh, with spectacles hanging down on their on their snout and um, offers up a simple empty teacup over to the rogue, and without saying anything, starts to pour this wonderful, wonderfully uh, aromatic black oolong tea uh, from there, and says. <sighs> I'm so happy that man stopped talking. <sighs> Allow me to get you a drink for all of that. And uh, puts out the drink. Uh, the rogue kind of takes it and sniffs it. Sips it. Delicious. Strong, but delicious black oolong tea. And the um, the the dragonborn simply kind of turns around to the rest of the party and has some 
take some time standing up on their feet and... <clears throat> I'm sorry here. I am the, uh, well, I guess I've had many jobs over the years here in Devarin, but, um, I now find myself as, um, um, well, let's call it a, an advisor to the uh, New Towns administration, and also, uh, I keep the young ones at bay. Twice a week, they come and learn from Elder PG, as they call me. None of them seem to get my name right. I have no problem, no idea why PG Rik Hashfranixidin is such a troublesome roll off the tongue for these young ones. Uh, the wizard runs forward and just ex it, without even asking just grabs their hand and just starts shaking them oh my gosh uh has for, has for an accident uh, I, I, I've, I've heard of of your exploits and and, uh, and I, I was over at academy and uh, you've 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 actually changed uh, the the, I, the the my evocation actual professor was was raving about you the, the the work you've done in evocation oh please if i could just pick your brain for just a quick moment and doesn't even get into that last sentence before um, there is a, uh, there is a yelp as the, uh, wizard pulls their voice back, uh, having a little bit of frostbite onto their, uh, the palm of their, of their hand. And, um, um, uh, PG seems to, El Elder PG seems to, uh, kind of shake off his hand and goes, I appreciate your, um, your enthusiasm, young one, but, uh, if we're going to have this kind of conversation, perhaps we could do it over a bit of tea and a bit of a quieter tone. I'm a bit more mm, aversive to the loud ones, if you would please. But please, have a seat. Have a seat, all of you. Uh, barkeep, I'm going to need another... Um, um, another... Uh, Mm. Teapot, if you would, please. Come right up, Elder PG. <laughs> and there we go. We got a half hour left. I think we got enough time for two more characters. What do y'all say? Let's see if we can get two more characters in our starting town. Got some interesting people so far. I'm loving it so far. Here we go now. Again, made these tables up myself a couple days ago. Made them up for NPC race tables. Uh, if you roll a 10, you get the exotic table. Pow! Or rather, I'm sorry, pow! It's, it's over there. There you're going to get the exotic race table. We did actually roll on that and got a minotaur. Mayor, who's young, which I freaking love. Uh, for those of you, by the way, who've, uh, who haven't caught up with this so far, here's our here's our town so far of the, and uh, yes, Dirty 20 Live. Uh, I'm going to be posting this on my Twitter after the show is completed. Uh, you're going to be able to get these uh, these tables after we're all done, by the way. Thank you so much, uh, Kiari Queen and Dirty 20 Live for the follows to Gilding Light, Gilding Light channel. It's very much appreciated. Um, so uh, you can uh, come over to my Twitter at Lucas the VA Ninja, and uh, I'm going to be posting these uh, tables there. And uh, everything except for the voice acting table. That one is over at patreon.com slash bonus action. Or you can go to Instagram at uh, Instagram. Uh, at uh, bonus underscore action. Watch yourself on that one. Um, and yes, there's also a playlist that we've got uh, uh, um, on YouTube. You can go watch some of the other episodes that we've done where we've made up pair, uh, player characters. But this one here, we're going from a DM perspective. We're looking at NPCs. What have we made so far? Well, uh, off of chat suggestion, we have named the city of this town uh, Duvarin. Oops, you guys can't see that. <laughs> The, city, the name of the city is Duvarin. And who do we have so far in the city of Duvarin? Well, we have... We have Anton Ar uh, Arisus, a half-elf shopkeep of the local trading post, 29 years old, blue eyes, white hair, wearing a nice robe, who has a Spanish accent. We also have the mayor of the town, a minotaur named Patroclos. And... Um, is it all right if we use these tables for our own character creation? Please, care, please, Kiari Queen. No, no, uh, no, uh, no cost necessary or anything on that. Uh, Mayor Patroclos, aka Pat, 
uh, Mayor Pat, who's a young minotaur, 18 years old, green eyes, dark fur, wearing a kind of a coat with like an emblem on it for the, uh, wearing the, uh, the, the dwarven rune of D for the Duv uh, uh, Duvarin, uh, loud with a lot of bravado. They've met a non-binary, green-skinned tiefling by the name of Mockery, a.k.a. Mock, who is a criminal. Uh, 46 years old, uh, black hair, black goatee, red eyes, wearing simple fabrics, but with a Scottish accent. We've also met Shamil Barron, a female gnome jeweler who runs a, t uh, a, 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 a shop, also provided by chap, of Barron's Baubles, which I think is a very wonderful name. She's 151 years old, gray eyes, a multicolored shock of hair, uh, wearing simple fabrics, a white uh, kind of uh, buttoned uh, uh, shirt with a gold filigree, uh, who has a thin and often mumbling voice. Do you do any voice acting per chance? I do. do I do. I have done for about 11 years now. Um, you've heard me in video games, anime, commercials, audiobooks, a lot of other things like that. Go check out what I do there. You've maybe heard me in things like, if you play video games, uh, Warframe, Desperados 3, Wasteland 3, Payday 2, Ark Survival Evolved, Clash Royale, the Cooking Mama series. I've done a lot of things over the years. Go check that out. And uh, thank you. I'm, I'm so I'm glad you enjoy it. And this is one of the things that I love about D&D uh, &D is that you get a chance to experiment with these voices. And again, there's no there's no there's no such thing as wrong voice acting because it's like improv. You know, you can just have that one there. But thank you. Appreciate the compliment. Who else do we have? We have another non-binary, uh, Leah Silverinth, a an elf who is the Mason Carpenter of the of the town. Elderly, 789 years old, with almond green eyes, blonde plated hair, not a hair out of place, wearing simple leathers, but a low and grunting voice, offering some help to the travelers already. And then Elder Pijerik Hashfurnixadin, also known as Elder Piji, a silver scaled dragonborn teacher, 69 years old. Yes, we rolled that. Get your nices out right now. Uh, wearing simple fabrics, but sighs with exhaustion a lot as part of the voice that they have. Let's make up two more characters, and we're going to have a pretty good town here. So, going after the common race first, because it's I'm going to go common race first. That's an 80. We got a human. Hey! I know that was an 80. I'm sorry, that was an 80, but it was an 8. You guys know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Finally got a human. Hey, a normal human in here. All right, cool. And by the way, I don't want to hear anybody out there say that humans are not interesting in D&D &D just because they're human. You make them interesting. That's the whole point of what we do here in character creation. So being able to do that is what we do. Now let's give them a roll. In town. We're going to roll off of the D20 chart here. Again, something I made up a few days ago. <laughs> Didn't take that long. And by the way, this doesn't have to encompass everything that's on here. But there we are. Almost all my characters have been humans, to be honest. There you go, Dirty 20. There you go. 10. The innkeep. The barkeep that we just talked to. Perfect. We got an innkeeper. We got a tavern keeper. <laughs> Trying to crack into it myself, and I found D&D is a great place to workshop it. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, we got we got it, we got a tavern keeper. All right. I think this is Big Giant Circles that's playing right now, by the way. No, it isn't. This is abstraction. Sound like Big Giant Circles. Uh Tavern Keep. Alright. Let's see how let's learn a little bit more about who this character is. Let's roll a D4 to see how old they are. Two, they are a young adult. So, young adult, we're going to go between... We're going to go between 20 and 30. So, let's roll 20 and 30. All right. Uh, low is going to be 20. High is going to be 30. That's a high. That's a Cthulhu on my Elder Dice. Um, oh, jeez. I just noticed. <laughs> Sorry. Just noticed that that, was, that that had been moved. Sorry. That was a that was a Cthulhu on the uh, on the on the dice right there by the way so there we go <laughs> okay um, so that's a in the thirties and then let's roll our d10 to see how old they are past thirty thirty one nice age nice age they're a thirty one year old tavern keep human 
Let's color color of their eyes. D6. Uh, let's roll one of my wormwood ones. Two blue eyes. Come on. Uh, okay, what, what color hair do they have? They don't have any. They are bald. Bald is beautiful. Is this in prep for a game? No, Dirty 20. It is not in prep for a game. We are literally making this thing up from the ether. And if you know what? If you wanted to take this and make it part of yours, feel free. I'm not going to be committed to this. Maybe, I, maybe I'll take it and put it in front of mine. Maybe you'll take some of these things, roll them up yourself, and make your own starter town. That's the beautiful thing about this, is that it's all in this for this. This is not in prep for an actual game itself. At least, not yet. <laughs> all right. Hello there. Good evening there, uh, Florinex. Welcome to the uh, welcome to the thing there. And Anaros, thank you so much for the follow, pretty much, uh, over to uh, Gilding Life. Okay. So, what do we got? Uh, uh, uh. Uh, they're bald. Yes, that's what we said. <laughs> bald is beautiful. Yay. Bald barkeep. What are they wearing? Simple fabrics. There's a lot of that going around. All right. And here comes my favorite. Here comes the voice acting. Again, this this table's not going to be up on my Twitter, but we're going to have uh, we're going to use this one. Uh, Namavik saying, for my towns and cities, I like to include a variation in age that's not necessarily uniform. So for my war-torn empire, there would be a lot less young adult and middle-aged NPCs. So you like roll D100s and then you map young to a specific range, for instance. That's nice. Yeah. And that's good because, again, it's fitting the theme of what you've got going for yourself because the young adult and the, the more middle-aged ones, the more the more fit for war, are going to be out on the, on the battlefield, right? And so you've got young and you've got old. And you don't have as many in between. What I would offer up, though, is that not everybody's going to be like that because there are some people out there that simply didn't go to war, right? Because they're going to have to be people out there who, were, who weren't fit for war, who uh, avoided, in some way, going to war, you know? So it's a, it's, it's a slimmer chance for that to find those people within your world but there's always going to be a chance that it does. I mean, I included in a chance for an exotic race, and look what we got. We got Mayor Pat. So, yeah, I think it's working out great. Here we go. For a D10 and uh, oh, D100, basically. Exactly. Yeah, some people left still left supporting the town. Here we go. What does our barkeep sound like? 85. I feel like we did that. No, we didn't. 85 is a nasal tone. Ha, ha, ha. A nasal tone. Oh, boy. I'm going to have fun with this. <laughs> okay. What's their name going to be? All right. Um, hmm. Now, this is where it gets interesting on, on Xanathar's Guide to Everything here, where we have the, the names of our humans because we've got different races. So I'm going to do this here. Let's, let's do this right. Uh, we're going to go Arabic. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. Okay, let's roll a D twenty. Natural 20, damn it. Can't use it. Natural 20 again? Stop it! Five, thank you. I don't want a natural 20 right now. I just rolled two in a row. Also, an idea for an NPC. Loxodon Taylor, who specifically tailors to larger humanoids. A big and tall. I love it. Oh, it's so great. That's great, Kiari Queen. Wonderful. Run with that. I love it. One, two, three, four. Okay. We're going to get an English name. I went as Arabic, Celtic, Chinese, Egyptian, English. So that was number five. Okay, cool. English. English it is. Uh, okay, let's see here. Male, male female, non-binary. Let's go for it. One or two is male. Uh, one or two is male. Three or four is female. Five or six is non-binary. Yeah. 
Another non-binary. Wow, we're inclusive in this town. Okay. Uh, let's go for... Okay, we're going to go for rolling one, two, three for female, four, five, six for male. For what they're going to take for their name, they're going to take a male name. They are non-binary. Okay. And we... Here we go. Male. Uh, so we're going to do D100. I see your question there, uh, by the way, there uh, in chat. One second. Let's roll this D100. Oh, I can't see that one. That's a 43. 43. Anyone know if there's a set way exhaustion can cause damage? I'm making, I'm making a barbarian subclass, which lengthens rage duration, but also adds damage after rage ends. Um, I remember I played with a group where, like, for... If you like basically used exhaustion as a resource, so like you have six points of exhaustion that you can use, that like you can choose to do something as a barbarian, but it would cost you a level of exhaustion to do so. So it was an effect, it was a, it was, it became an expendable resource for the player to, to decide if they wanted to use. I don't know if I would do it to rage duration, but I mean, you could, um, because there gets to be a point then where it doesn't come that get persistent rage and then doesn't actually come in. But if you're making a subclass, I think that's great there. A voice acting table is such a good idea. It's honestly the thing I struggle with the most is conceptualizing the voice in the moment. But I mean, that's the thing. Any 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 voice can be good and it can make them interesting and then it kind of, it can flavor what you want to have happen. So there's always that. Uh, but yes. All right, so let's see here. With 43 for the English name, they're taking the male name, but they're non-binary. Heward. Heward. H-E-W-A-R-D. Um, there's no family names. There's no family names on this one. Hmm. Okay. Hmm. <laughs> what do we do now? You know what? We won't worry about it. We'll just call him Heward. We'll just call them Heward for now. Okay. We'll just call them Heward for now. Broadshaw. Sounds good. Sounds good. But we're just gonna we're just gonna we're just gonna call them whatever. You know what? No, we'll take it. We'll take it. We'll take it there, Kiari Queen. Well done. We'll throw it in there. Why not? I like it. Good. So this bald, blue-eyed, 31-year-old uh tavern keep. Um as Elder PG. Uh, asks for the mug of the the pot of tea. A bald gentleman wearing a uh, a leather a leather uh, apron, uh, and uh, currently using a rag to clean out a uh, a stein, an empty stein. Kind of goes, all right, fine. If you want to have another one there, sure. And uh, decides to go over and get that one. Kind of calls the attention of all this one. Oh, hi. Uh, welcome to. Uh, Welcome to my humble establishment. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I gotta, I gotta say, I'm really happy that uh, you were able to get uh, Mock stopping all that there, uh, Heward. Heward Broadshaw. Um, I'm the, uh, I'm the uh, owner of the establishment, and um, I've got to say, I'm really happy that all of you are here. Uh, yeah, and if Elder PG takes a, if PG here is taking a shining to you, <laughs> I would take that as a huge, huge compliment. Just watch out; he's got a uh, kind of a cold personality. <laughs> it, and you hear PG, <laughs> and uh, Hewitt says, "Well, uh, of course, if you need any rooms, uh, I do have some uh, some rooms here. I'm always we don't get uh, we don't get as many travelers these days after our new uh, new mayor came into town. But um, yeah, we've got a, a fair amount of, uh, of rooms available. I've got uh, I've got two rooms available right now. If you guys need to stay for the night, uh, I thought I heard Mock uh, say something to you. But uh, yeah, feel free to." Uh, let me know if you need some rooms, and uh, I'll be here uh, doing all this. And the uh, the cleric, um, who is this uh, young female cleric, uh, just kind of comes over to the to the to the to the counter, um, barely like a barely like the chin coming up to the counter itself. Um, and uh, as this halfling cleric kind of pull, pulls themselves up onto the counter, goes, "Um, I was wondering, do you have any um, do you have any, do you have any cinnamon rolls?" I've been looking all around town for them, but I don't know if there's any around. Oh, 
Uh, well, we actually have a full we have a full menu that we can have here. Um, cinnamon rolls have been a hard thing to get, but I might be able to ask around. Uh, there's <laughs> sometimes there are some uh, good people in town that actually do some own uh, some of their own baking, and uh, they they kind of contribute. We're we're kind of a, a big family here, so yeah, we might be able to find uh, something for you there, ma'am. Uh, sure, I'll I'll look around there for you, uh, especially if you're staying the night. Um, if anything else, uh, maybe if I can't find them tonight, maybe I'll have some for you in the morning. And the the cleric's fit, smile just expands to <laughs> just hops down. She hops down. She has a little spring in her step, and she's just so happy right now. So there we go. There's Heward Broadshaw. We got ten more minutes. One last character for our starting town. What's it gonna be? All right, here we go. Why is it that this thing keeps moving off camera? <laughs> I apologize for all that. All right, here we go. Our last one. Another tiefling. Okay. This is Namavex, by the way. Oh, hey, what's up there, Echoes Vox? A half orc. All right, cool. We got a half orc. Just trying to mix it up for something different. Obviously, we can we can mix it up there, but there it is. Let's let's get a half orc in there. So a half orc. What job is the half orc? Not rock. Half rock, a full, a half a rock is still part rock and I don't want to deal with that. No, no, no. Uh, <laughs> okay. Whoa. There we go. Now you can see that. All right, here we go. So let's do their roll in the town. And let's roll a D20. Oh... They're a writer or a storyteller in town with a 16 on the die. Oh, I love it. Oh, man. That's great. Okay. So, let's figure out a little bit more about them. This half-orc. I love my half-orcs. I do love my half-orcs. I've got a couple of half-orc characters. Here we go. One, they are an adolescent. They are a young half-orc. All right, so we're going to make them 16 years old. I'm calling it right now. We got a 16-year-old half-orc young writer. Oh, baby. This is already juicy. I love it so much. All right, here we go. Uh, With blue eyes. Oops. And a multicolored shock of hair. We're going to say that it is green today. <laughs> green hair on this half orc. This young adolescent writer. Blue eyes, green hair, half orc. Oh, what are they? What are they wearing? What are they wearing? They have leathers on. All right. Leather and metal. Might have some different things on that. And what does this half-orc sound like? What happens when this ha young half-orc opens their mouth? Let's go for it. I am on the edge of my seat for this one. Here we go. Whoops. Ah. Is that a 30 or an 80? That's a 30. That's a 35. They have an Italian accent. <laughs> they have an Italian accent. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, man. Male, female, non binary. Non binary. I cannot stop rolling the non binaries today, everybody. It is just happening. Leather and metal wear, young writer. What if he's a journalist, like the kind of people who go to war zones or battlegrounds and write about the happenings? I mean, yeah, could be. Could be. Wow. Man, it is just happening. You guys are seeing the rolls. I'm not, I'm not fudging the rolls. You guys are seeing them. All right. Um, we're going to go for a first name only on this one. And let's get a go here. So let's do male or female name they're going to take. 
Uh, there's going to be a female name. All right. I do the females. I know I do male, female, non-binary. And then when it comes to the names, I go female, male. And the reason I do that is because in Xanathar's Guide, uh, the females are mentioned first and the males are mentioned second. So that's why I go for the females first. So this is going to be a uh, female named, non-binary, half-orc, young. And we're going to go for a, another, uh, where's my dice? There it is. D100. 31 on the name. Oh, what a cute name. What an adorable name for a young half-orc. Greegy. Greegy. G R I G I. <laughs> for non binary names, you might consider rolling uh, for a random town name, random mineral, random animal. Okay. I like the idea, Echoes of Ox. That's a wonderful idea. I just don't have it here. <laughs> I'm trying I'm trying to work with what I've got here and, you know, putting putting this all together. But a great idea. I love that idea. Go for that. I know two Baltimores who are non binary. Oh, that's cool. That's nice. And three sparrows. Right. You know, you know, it was like, you know, it was cool. It was that like the tiefling when we did non-binary, it was like, oh wait, there's a virtue list, you know, like that. Like if I had nicknames, I'd be like on a nickname list. That would be cool actually to make like a, like a D100 non-binary name list. You know what I mean? Like, just like, you know, no, no gender, just boom. That'd be a good, that'd be a good table to have. All right. So there's that. But I like your idea. I like your idea about that. That's cool. But we're gonna go greggy on this one. I'm gonna take that. I'm gonna take that on. You go right ahead, Echoes. That's I, I'm, I love it. Let's go for it. All right, so we're gonna go greggy. So Italian accent, leather or metals, blue eyes, green hair, a writer or a storyteller. Write that in there too. So the party uh, concludes their business that day in the town of Javarin. Goes to bed, wakes up the next day, and yes, there are cinnamon rolls in the morning. As uh, Heward was able to uh, rile some people, there is a there are there are cinnamon rolls that are uh, s like small little cupcake sized, and they have um, an orange kind of marmalade like cream on top of them. More, more marmalade than cream, but they're definitely there. And the cleric is ecstatic and declares this place the best tavern she's, uh, best inn she's ever stayed in. Um, over, over at the uh, end of the, uh, uh, at the, uh, as the party is having bacon and eggs and bread and drinking their, uh, uh, the, <laughs> the wizard is having a light ale in the morning. Um, there is uh, two other people in, in the tavern itself. One is passed out just on the, on the table itself. And the other one is a young looking half orc, gray skin, green hair, um, uh, younger, like, like no tusks coming out of the, uh, the teeth themselves pointed, pointed ears. Um, you know, again, kind of, a uh, larger kind of eyes that are very shockingly blue, very bright blue iris. And, um, as uh, as the as the meal goes on, as the meal goes on, the um, the rogue notices that the the uh, the half orc is basically looking up at them and writing in a book every now and then, and then looking over at them and then going on, and then writing in the book, and the rogue just kind of makes a makes a thing to go over to the uh, uh, makes makes a makes a kind of a beeline to go over to the to the bar. And then comes around the side, and and kind of spies over the shoulder, and the 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 half work is writing details about the people, the the party, and with a oh the natural two, unfortunately the half work does not notice as the rogue shoot takes the book away and 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 just kind of starts looking at it and then going like hey guys I think we got a little we got a little bit of a thing there and um. Uh, the, the half orc speaks up. Hey, now come on now. What are you doing to me? I'm just trying to make some stories about all this. Y'all seem very, very interesting. I just wanted to make some things. Give it back. Give it back. Give it back. And uh, 
uh, the paladin goes, wait, what? You're writing about us? What? Who Who do you work for? Is this, are you part of Mockery's crew? What? No, I don't, I don't know any, uh, no, look, look, I'm just trying to, look, I'm just, a, I'm a traveling storyteller. I'm just, you guys look interesting. You look like you're offset for adventure itself there. I'm, I don't know, maybe I could, you know, I'm trying to look for inspiration behind what you guys are doing. That's all. I'm nothing. I'm not trying to hurt anybody here. Please, can I have my book back? And the rogue starts flipping through the book and starts finding some illustrations as well in this book that are very, very detailed. The rogue's like, this is actually pretty impressive. Look at this. And shows it to the wizard. And the wizard's like, I mean, I make notes in my spell book, but this is, this is some good stuff. Wow. What's your name? <sighs> Grigi, and the cleric chuckles. What are you, what are you laughing about there, half pint? I don't, I, I don't tell you this. I don't tell you my name to the, so that way you can go over there and start knocking it for me. I have to deal with my name already as it is. Look, I don't think anybody's trying to trying trying to take your thing away. Here, come on, give it give it over to me. Paladin takes it, hands the book back. Look, don't. You might just not want to be so obvious about what you're writing okay maybe that's there's a little something that we can take that you can take into it there oh okay so if i follow behind you and uh uh and i'm sorry i lost the accent for a second <laughs> so if i follow behind you i can i can maybe i can uh, i can stay i can follow a little bit more of your exploits i've been trying i've been trying to actually get some new stories there you guys look like you're in for some um you guys look like you're having a, a bit of fun yeah i could i, I could uh, have this there i think i'm slipping into irish for goodness sake a bad Italian accent today. That's all right. There's no such thing as a wrong accent, right? There's no such thing as a wrong voice. Anyway, uh, but the party kind of shrugs their shoulders and goes, you better stay out of our way. And at that point, the doors open and a green-skinned tiefling comes in with a sour expression. All right. All right. Are you ready? Are you ready to go or not? And that's where the party leaves on their adventure out of the starting town of Duvarin. So there we go, everybody. Look at that. Two hours, and we just uh, created, uh, who, how many did we get? We got eight different uh, Starter Town characters, all with varying personalities. It didn't mean that, that, that they had to sound different. Is that they had differing personalities. And that's the kind of thing that we love to do here on character creation, is injecting your characters with a little bit more pizzazz and a little bit more substance. That's the kind of thing we like to do here. Uh, I want to say again, thank you for everybody who've, who's come by today. Thank you, everybody who's came by over the last uh, seven weeks. And we've been having all this fun stuff. Um, <laughs> and uh, I just want to say again, my name is Lucas Schuneman. Uh, if, uh, I'm going to be posting uh, all these tables outside of the voice acting table uh, on the uh, on my uh, Twitter uh, immediately after the show here. And uh, whoa. <laughs> and um, I want you guys to come over there, grab them if you want to. They're totally free. I have no problem in, in letting you guys have that. And again, you can come over there to my Twitter and uh, check it all out and grab it and tell people about it. I'd love to hear. And I'd love to hear if you use it. I'd love to hear what you come up with. Uh, that's going to be our time though today here on character creation, um, our season finale. So I hope to come back with you guys next season uh, with some more guests and some more wonderful player, player characters like that one. And again, thank you everybody in chat. Thank you for everybody who uh, donated uh, followed, subscribed, everything on this one here. And uh, we'll see you guys around. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.